I just wonder, first of all, what cinematic potential you saw in Nicola Yoon's novel yeah. and what drew you to the material? I mean, I loved the book. I loved um, Nicola Yoon, too. I just think it was such an inventive book, you know, of the way she mixed drawings and text messages and, you know, conversations. I just hadn't read anything like that. I thought it was, I thought it was so imaginative and I thought Maddie's imagination was large and that I could bring that to the screen and really yeah, dive into that. And how involved was uh, Nicola in the filmmaking process? I, I saw that she was there on set a couple yeah, of times. Yeah, she did and, come know. on set a few times with her daughter Penny and her husband David, uh, who wrote, who, who illustrated the book actually. Um, I When I got the job, I met with her and we just had like a four hour coffee. <laughs> And I really just talked to her about, you know, the book and how she saw the characters and what the intentions were and, you know, just got to know her too because I just felt like it was her brain, you know, behind this. And and meeting her just gave me such a sense of like where these characters came from. And I think we had a similar sensibility um, that I thought I could, I could visualize her book, you know. And were you with with her when she saw it for the first time? No, I wasn't. She went to see it as private screening with her husband, and she called me and left the most like beautiful message that I definitely have saved and will keep forever. <laughs> <laughs> and before I called her back and we spoke in person, but it meant a lot to me that she loved the movie. Yeah. And what in the novel we see as um, I am conversations and text conversations, mm -hmm. you. Um, bring to life on the screen very yeah. inventively and, and we see Ollie and Maddie actually face to face yeah. the, the diner scene and the lighting yeah. scene are, are just beautiful. Can you talk us through sort of keeping those scenes visually interesting and um, you know the connection between them? I think whereas in the book it was easy to read the text messages and think of Maddie and Ollie connected I felt visually you they wouldn't be connected and you wouldn't be able to gauge that they were falling in love and that it would be incredibly boring to watch them text each other for minutes on end and have to read too much. Um, so, uh, you know, I felt it felt very natural to me that they would be in the same room. And, you know, uh, her architecture models, I thought, provided like a really great way of merging her hobbies and imagination with you know, this kind of fantasy element of the film. Because the circumstances they're in are obviously very extreme, but yeah. uh, casting obviously is always a vital element mm -hmm. of any movie, but I think particularly when it's a romance and yes. quite a small uh, cast, cast in this film. Yeah. Can you talk a bit about casting um, yeah. Mandler and Nick and what yeah. they, they brought to their roles? Yeah, it was a very short list, <laughs> you know, and when Amanda, like, auditioned, she was, like, in Paris over Skype and, um, and it was just perfect, you know. As soon as she said it, the words out of her mouth, you can just feel like this is what Maddie's supposed to feel like, this kind of, you know, quiet energy, inquisitive mind, and, and she, she that's what she's like, you know. Of course, she built on the role and she was acting, but I think she had these kind of core, you know, vibes that, that really worked with the character. Um, and Nick was the same way. When I met him, he was just so you know, humble and, um, you know, down to earth in the way that I wanted to make sure Ollie felt like down to earth and, and tangible, even though he doesn't say a lot and you don't see into his world as much as you see into hers. And what about the soundtrack for the film? Can you tell us yeah. a bit about selecting the yeah. tracks for that? And also if you have a particular favorite sequence, I'm sure it's hard, um, in yeah. the film that uses the song. Yeah, I mean, music is such a, fun element of the film making and I think we have the most amazing soundtrack. I mean, it's so diverse and hit so many different, you know, levels and a lot of classic, you know, music and a lot of fun pop songs and um, I mean, I think probably my favorite use of a song, the song that's never changed is like Sound and Color from Alabama Shakes. It just fit right in that moment that we used it and I could never imagine anything else. And I wrote the Alabama Shakes like a very big love letter begging them to use the song. <laughs> Yeah. Good. I'm glad they said yes. Yes, me too. <laughs> um, Maddie and her mum watch uh, Moonstruck, and that's yes. their sort of go-to movie. I just wondered in your own life which movie you could watch without tiring of, and one that maybe kind of you know you put on to lift your spirits. Yeah. Um, 
Breakfast at Tiffany's, I've watched a lot. <laughs> it's often in the background, yeah. And I think reading something romantic, that's mm -hmm. romantic on the page, is quite different to seeing it on screen, yeah. isn't it? And I think you got the tone just right in this film. And Thank it, you. it is so romantic. Um, and I just wondered kind of what you did to um, to stop it from being sort of cheesy or right. sentimental, or all those things that, you know, in the wrong hands, maybe it could have been. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just, the main goal was to make it authentically romantic, you know, and not, and, and not just for teens, you know, for adults as well. I wanted it to feel romantic and innocent, but sexy and dark, you know, and I think we were able to do that. Um, I think score helped a lot as well. I mean, Ludwig Göransson um, did an amazing job making the score cool. <laughs> um, and we worked on that a lot of just getting that tone to kind of make you feel like you're in a modern, a modern romance. Yeah. And in the opening scenes of the film, Maddy talks about her wardrobe of a hundred white t-shirts yeah. and we see her birthday cake is yeah. kind of white frosting yeah. and everything. And I felt in some ways it kind of almost trains our eyes to then really notice the colour scheme right. of the film. Could yeah. you talk a little bit about that and how it mm -hmm. kind of reflects Maddie's journey? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it definitely is, you know, she, she progresses from these white t-shirts to a little bit of colour and, you know, the... Uh, palette of the film was pastels. It was, you know, pastel yellow and purple and green and blue. And that's pretty much the only colors that are in the film, um, minus some like, you know, darker staple colors. But it was important for that feeling. I wanted it to feel almost ethereal, like it was, I wanted it to feel comforting and soothing and understand why she feels happy here and, you know, show that there was love in the house and, and you can be able to feel that. And you shot the Hawaii scenes in Mexico. Yes. With beautiful um, underwater um, shoots with the, um, with all the, the fish yeah. there and everything. What, what was that like to shoot? Um, it was beautiful. Uh, Amandla had to do, well, Nick too, but Amandla had to do a lot of underwater work, which I was just like, thought was so nerve wracking for her and physically exhausting of being held underwater. But I think the opening is so beautiful with her underwater, so I'm, I'm happy we were able to do it. Thank you, McGee. Thanks yeah. very much. Thank you so much. Again Thank on the you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.